Our country is gripped by two crises. Britain's hospitals are overwhelmed and Britain's economy is in the worst recession for 300 years. A responsible government faced with these crises to people's health and people's jobs would not pass this bad deal. For this deal will make British people poorer and British people less safe. It's not really a trade deal at all. It's a loss of trade deal. It's the first trade deal in history to put up barriers to trade. Is that really the government's answer to British business, fearing for their futures, and British workers fearing for their jobs? We were told leaving the EU would cut red tape. But this deal represents the biggest increase in red tape in British history. 23 new committees to oversee this new trade bureaucracy, 50,000 new customs officials, 400 million new forms. Some analysts estimate the cost of this new red tape burden for British business at over £20 billion every year. Madam Deputy Speaker, this isn't the frictionless trade the Prime Minister promised. These reels of red tape will put more jobs at risk at a time when so many are already being lost to COVID. And all these new trade barriers will raise prices in the shops at a time when so many families are already struggling to make ends meet. From the failure to agree a good deal for Britain's services sector, 80% of our economy, to the failure to agree a stable deal that investors will trust, this is a lousy deal for Britain's economic future. The Conservatives can no longer claim to be the party of business. And with this deal, the Conservatives can no, can no longer claim to be the party of law and order. For our police will no longer have real-time, immediate access to critical European crime-fighting databases like Schengen 2. Such sources of key information about criminals and crimes are used every single day by our police. In one year alone, used over 600 million times, often in the heat of investigation. Thanks to the Prime Minister's deal, British police will, use that, will lose that privileged access and criminals will escape. <laughs> Madam Deputy Speaker, there are so many things wrong with this deal, from its failings on the environment to the broken promises for our young people on Erasmus. Yet the irony is that with a deal supposed to restore parliamentary sovereignty, our parliament has been given only hours to scrutinise it when the European Parliament has days. And business has just days to adjust to this deal. Liberal Democrats called on the Prime Minister to negotiate a grace period to help businesses adjust, forgetting, of course, this government no longer cares about business. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, the government leaves us no choice but to vote against this deal tonight. Perhaps that won't surprise too many people. Liberal Democrats are, after all, a proud pro-European party who fought hard against Brexit. But we have genuinely looked we have genuinely looked at this post-Brexit trade deal to assess whether it's a good basis for the future relationship between the UK and the EU, and it isn't. And to those who argue a vote against this deal is a vote for a no deal, I have to tell you this. The Liberal Democrats have led the charge against a no deal when this Prime Minister when this Prime Minister was selling the virtues of a no deal. Madam Deputy Speaker, tonight the question is simple. Is this a good deal for the British people? Today, Madam Deputy Speaker, the question is, is this a good deal for the British people? A deal that costs jobs, increases red tape, hits our service-based economy, undermines our police and damages our young people's future. It's a bad deal and Liberal Democrats will vote against it.